Hi guys or girls or anything in between or outside of that entirely, I'm Cody and this is my tutorial for brand new players at Destiny 2. Now you may be thinking, there are several tutorials for Destiny 2 beginners, why make another? That's because I was brand new to the game only 2 months ago. I watched the same videos you probably clicked on or scrolled past and I realised that there are so many things that as a long time Destiny player, you forget new players won't understand. With that being said, here is things I wish I knew as a new player on When you first open Destiny 2, it's going to offer you three classes to pick from, Titan, Hunter, and Warlock. The Titan class in Destiny 2 is basically what you'd call a tank in games like Overwatch. It is brilliant at staying alive, and it's definitely good at damage dealing at melee range. I'd recommend this class if you want to run around like a madman in solo play. Overall, I'd say it's the easiest class for beginners to learn, and its abilities handle a lot like they're out of Black Ops 3, so it's the most similar to other games you might have played. At the late game, Titan is quite helpful because it can stay alive and often brute force its way through harder enemies. The Hunter is almost like a glass cannon. It's very good at dealing lots of damage and finishing off enemies, but it is also quite squishy and you can die very fast if you put yourself in the wrong situations. Hunter is extremely useful because it has high damage supers and its invisibility abilities on Void make you the perfect in and out hitman when fighting groups of enemies. If you like the idea of being a magical space ninja, I'd definitely recommend this class. Warlock is a great class for people more experienced with MMO games or MOBAs. It is quite complex with the way you use its abilities, and it doesn't by itself seem that great, but once you get a better grasp of the character and its abilities, it can be a great aid to your team. It is the only class in the game that I would say is 100% necessary in the late game because of its Well of Radiance super ability, healing your entire team insanely fast for 25 seconds straight. Ultimately, what class you choose is entirely up to you. I personally play all three, and I would recommend heavily trying each of them out. I originally played Hunter, but later I found my love for Warlock. This could be the same for you with any class. Give it a go. It actually benefits you to have each character as a backup anyway. Okay, you've chosen your character. Now what the hell is this game? How do I know what to do? This is actually one of the biggest problems with Destiny. I don't think Bungie necessarily does that bad of a problem helping new players, it's just that there is so much to learn all at once. For that reason, I'll go through everything you could possibly need to know about this game, with timestamps in the description so you can come back if you ever forget. Let's take a look at the director. This can be opened at any time by holding tab or pressing M. The first option on the left is store. Here you can see the cosmetics you can buy right now using the following in-game currencies. Glimmer, Legendary Shards, Silver, and Bright Dust. The last two are only used here in the store. The next tab is Season. Here you can view the current Season Pass and its rewards, including XP and other bonuses. You can also view the Seasonal Challenges, which are quests that appear each week and give you Seasonal Materials, Bright Dust, and lots of XP. Here you can also view the challenges for previous seasons released during the expansion. Next up is the quest tab. This also shows seasonal challenges alongside your bounties and event challenges such as Season of the Lost challenges. This is where you find things like exotic quests, campaign objectives, and more. You can sort them using tabs on the left. This is the map. It shows you things like vendors who give you missions or bounties, campaigns, dungeons, and raids. You can also see all the fast travel spots and other collectibles such as world chests and lost sectors. Next is destinations. Here you can select planets to go to and also view activities such as strikes, crucible and gambit. Here you can also see the helm and the tower which are home bases with many important NPCs. If you hold E you can see current objectives such as campaign quests or other important quests. Here you can also view powerful and pinnacle drops via the little stars and if you click on the corresponding planet you'll see how you can earn these drops. Finally is Roster. Here you can view your friends list, clan member list, and change your privacy settings. You can also view nearby players, such as other players on the tower or other planets. If you press R, you can open your inventory. Starting on the left again, you can see clan, which again shows you clan members, which rewards you can earn each week, and the clan level. Next is Collections. Here you can view every item you've ever got, and also reacquire any exotic gun, armor piece, or cosmetic item you've ever got. You can also see badges, which show which items you've got from each location, such as the Throne World. Triumphs is basically the achievements for Destiny 2. You can view what you have achieved sorted by location using the groups. At the bottom you can also view seals, which is a sort of way to show off a group of achievements you may have. Next is character. 
Here you can see all the items you have for every slot such as helmets or power weapons. You can also view the seasonal artifact which gives you bonus power level and also lets you buy mods that you can use to put on your armor for various bonuses. You can also view your subclasses, change between elements or change the abilities within the subclasses themselves. If you scroll down you can also view your cosmetics such as sparrow, ship, armor, customizations, etc. Finally you have settings. There isn't much to note here except you should turn on helmet to always, otherwise people on the tower will laugh at you. The first thing you'll be doing in Destiny 2 is the tutorial, or new light mission. This takes you through the Cosmodrome and teaches you how to use abilities and a bit how the leveling system works. One thing to note is that you can track missions by clicking on them, which for newer players makes remembering what you're trying to do a lot easier. This new light mission will eventually give you a ship, letting you go to the tower. Here you can find Ikora Ray, who will give you the quest, A Spark of Hope. This quest tells you to go to Devrim K. However, you also receive two other quests that upon completion give you access to the other two subclass elements. In my opinion, the easiest way to complete these quests are lost sectors, as they can easily be repeated and have lots of enemies grouped up. To create orbs of power, you must kill multiple enemies with one super usage. To get XP fast, I recommend taking bounties from Banshee44, the tower's gunsmith. Now that you have subclasses, it is entirely up to you what you do next in Destiny 2. I recommend trying each activity at least once to see what you enjoy, however, before you go crazy, let's talk about the different activities. Destiny 2 has a lot of things to do, whether it's PvE or PvP. Here is a list with brief explanations in no particular order. These are basically short levels or snippets from previous campaign missions. They consist of one or two puzzles, lots of enemies, and a large boss fight at the end. You get put into a team of three guardians. Gambit is a mishmash of PvE and PvP, where you and three players face off against another team to try and kill the enemies and beat the prime evil first. Crucible is the PvP section of Destiny, where you are pitted directly against other players in either deathmatch, control, or survival modes to see which guardian comes out on top. There are also rotating silly modes each week. Dares of Eternity is basically a wacky game show where you are sent in to fight three different enemy types alongside a large crew of guardians in order to please the Star Horse, a literal cosmic equine, for a chance at his great fortune. I think this one's pretty obvious. You play a campaign consisting of roughly eight missions. I heavily recommend Witch Queen, however Beyond Light grants stasis, and Shadowkeep grants access to some fabulous exotics. Every location in Destiny has a large amount of these hidden areas that are home to a large amount of foes and a relatively tough boss. Every day, any one of these lost sectors can become legendary, granting an increased chance at exotic armor on solo completions. Each season there are a few activities that you can complete, such as expedition or containment, usually for craftable weapons, which I'll talk on later. Each seasonal activity also usually ties into the seasonal quest, which is a sort of mini-campaign which grants great materials and XP. Raids are usually quite long missions that can be anywhere from 1-3 to three hours depending on your proficiency. These contain lots of different encounters such as boss fights or difficult puzzles. These are also notorious for giving lots of loot. Dungeons are a smaller form of raids, usually 1 hour or less, that give you a smaller amount of loot than a raid without as many players required and a lower difficulty level. Destiny is host to a variety of enemies, each with an intense backstory. Currently known enemy factions are Cabal, a strong humanoid military force, Fallen, insectoid aliens, and the previous followers of the Traveler, Hive, an alien race known for their unending hunger for destruction, Vex, a race of time-traveling evil robots, Scorn, a darkness-corrupted, undead version of the Fallen, and finally the Taken, a legion of all the previous enemies that have been quite literally taken by the darkness, now led by the Hive King Oryx. Every enemy in Destiny falls into one of five categories. Minor, red health bar enemies that are easy to kill and don't offer that much of a threat. Elites are tougher versions of miners with a dull orange health bar. Mages usually take the form of mini bosses or particularly strong enemies with a yellow health bar. Ultras or bosses are usually just saved for the end bosses of raids, campaigns, etc. These have a bar on the bottom of the screen. Finally, champions are a sort of mini-boss that are very hard to defeat without the help of champion stunning armor mods. If you look on the right side of your character, you can see we have six numbers going down with a symbol beside each. These are your armor stats, and they dictate how long your abilities take to cool down. Mobility also affects speed and jump height, resilience increases damage resist, and recovery decreases the time it takes for you to heal upon taking damage. These numbers are governed by your armor stats. One very important note is that it works off of tears. 
If you have 91 resilience versus 99, you are only going to get tier 9 resilience, as it always rounds down. As of right now, intellect is not as useful, and mobility doesn't directly affect your damage or abilities, so the other four stats are far more useful. This is all down to how you want to play, however. Every legendary, as in purple, gun and armor piece you own lets you put mods on it to enhance functions of the item, or give it new functions and benefits it didn't have before. Guns can have mods put onto them that increases damage against minor enemies, mages or bosses, allowing you to squeeze that much more damage out in any situation. Or perhaps for PvP, you could chuck on a mod like Quick Access Sling to pull out a shotgun faster to kill an enemy from close quarters. Every gun slash armor piece you own can be leveled up and masterworked, which for guns increase a random stat by 10, and for armor, increases every stat by 2. Armor mods are where it gets a bit more complicated. As I said earlier, you have the seasonal artifact, which gives you a variety of armor mods such as the champion stun mods, ammo finder mods, etc. Every armor piece in Destiny has a limited amount of energy you can allocate to each mod you want to put on your armor. This energy will be upgraded when you level it up, and while extremely expensive, it is something that is almost 100% necessary late game. You can also place specific stat boost mods onto your armor, meaning you can push yourself either just over the edge of a tier of resilience, or even give yourself a whole tier entirely if that's what you need. As I said earlier, this is quite complicated, and I would recommend coming back to this point in the video later on. Lastly is Ghost Mods. If you have a Ghost of Legendary Rarity, you can equip several mods such as Glimmer Boost, XP Boost, Chest Finders, or even Armor Finder mods. I personally choose to put on this configuration of mods shown. The first mod I have is a XP Boost. Pretty simple, just boost my XP gain by 2%. Second is a Discipline Armor mod. Basically what this does is make every armor drop focus its points mainly into Discipline, and guarantee at least 10 points. I would heavily recommend this mod over any other armor mod, for reasons I'll get into later. Finally, I put on the Greater Core Harvest mod, as this allows me to get Enhancement Prisoned at a faster rate. I can't upgrade my Ghost or Armor, what am I missing? Destiny 2 has a dozen or so materials used in everyday play that can be difficult for a new player to wrap their heads around. Majority of the items in the inventory screen can be ignored. A lot of very niche currencies or destination resources. The main ones to focus on that you will need throughout the game are as follows. Glimmer. This is the main currency in the game that is capped at 250k. You get Glimmer from almost everything you do and it is used on almost anything you do. Legendary Shards. These are gained anytime you dismantle an item or from most playlist activity completions. You have a really low amount when you start, so I recommend trying to hoard a bit of them before you start spending them willy nilly. Enhancement Cores. These are the base tier of enhancement materials and are used mostly for masterworking guns and armor. Enhancement Prisms are the next tier, and 3 are needed per each Masterwork armor piece. They are mostly attained from vendors and the season pass. Ascendant Shards are the rarest material in Destiny. One Ascendant Shard is required to Masterwork a Legendary armor piece, as in the level 10 upgrade, and 3 for an exotic armor piece. They are also used to purchase exotics from the Monument to Lost Lights at the Tower. Upgrade modules have one purpose, infusing one item into another to increase its power level. These are quite useful and also quite hard to get, so I would recommend using them extremely sparingly. One very good way to get them is to play through the Witch Queen campaign, as it rewards you one at each checkpoint on each character. Destiny has two different level systems, Power and XP slash Pass. Your power level is based on the average of all your equipped weapons and armor, alongside the bonus power provided by your seasonal artifact. As your power increases, so do the power of the drops you get. One thing to note is that you don't need to have your highest power items equipped. Destiny will still drop you the highest possible level items you can receive if your highest level items are in your inventory or vault. How does power affect me? Your power level directly affects how much damage you deal and take from your enemies in Destiny 2. There are three different caps to the power level each season that can only be obtained in certain ways. First is the soft cap. Currently this is 1540 in season 19. Random drops cannot go above this level. Powerful drops, tier 1 to 3, drop all the way up to 1590. Finally, to reach 1600 power, you must get pinnacle drops. So what is XP for? XP increases your season pass level, allowing you to claim all sorts of cosmetic and functional items from the pass. As you gain XP, the seasonal artifact will slowly increase your power level and also allow you to claim the seasonal mods. Alright, with that being said, let's talk about what you should be doing to increase your power. One very important thing I'll say straight away is, if you get an item that is above your current power for the item in that slot, 
press shift to lock it straight away. A big mistake some people make is dismantling every piece of gear they get and they make no progress through the power level. I greatly recommend grinding through the campaigns as they are fun and interactive ways to level up without doing the same few activities over and over. Once you've finished each of those, I would move into the activities I spoke of earlier. Depending on the season you are playing, the soft cap for loot power level will change, so I recommend googling that and trying to work your way there straight away. Each week, the powerful and pinnacle rewards for each of these activities are reset at Tuesday 1pm EST. In order to get the pinnacle challenge complete, you must do the following. Strikes must be completed as the current weekly element. You must play 3 matches of Crucible and Gambit. Raids and dungeons, however, just drop you the pinnacle as you go. Each week, the most recent raid and dungeon will give you pinnacle drops on every encounter, meaning you can get roughly 4 pinnacle drops per activity. These activities are quite hard though, and often include puzzles and mechanics which are not immediately obvious, so I'll be making several tutorials for each raid and dungeon to go with this video. In the meantime, there are plenty wonderful tutorials out there. I've done all my pinnacle for the week, now what? This is where an extremely useful tool comes into play, Destiny Item Manager. DIM is a website for Destiny players that lets you easily move absolutely any item you own from character to character. This means that when you complete your pinnacle on one character, you can move your guns over to another and get that one done. DIM isn't just useful for pinnacle though, it has an extremely large amount of features that make it almost 100% necessary for any Destiny player. I recommend bookmarking this website, as I find myself opening it several times each Destiny session. Okay, I've got to max power, am I done? Not necessarily. Destiny's loot system isn't just banned by the big yellow number you see. On top of getting higher power guns, there are a large variety of guns of each kind, each with their own perks and attachments. One of the key parts of Destiny 2 nowadays is the crafting system. There are a larger variety of guns that once you've received enough weapon patterns and leveled up, you can craft and choose your own perks, or even enhanced ones with greater capabilities. Weapon patterns can't be acquired until you complete the second quest of the Witch Queen campaign, Investigation. Upon completion, you gain access to a relic at the Enclave on Savathun's throne world. There you can begin a quest line that gives you access to deep sight weapons. Deep sight weapons, or red borders, will give you the gun's weapon pattern on dismantling alongside a crafting material called Resonant Elements. Most guns require multiple weapon patterns to craft, the amount being visible in the Pattern and Catalyst tab in Triumphs. Some of the best craftable guns right now are raid specific, such as the guns from Vow the Disciple or King's Fall. These raids have chests called Red Border Chests that can be activated throughout the raid and open at the end, dropping a random Red Border gun. Upon finishing, you can also interact with the final chest, and once per week you can purchase a guaranteed Red Border of any specific gun you have already collected. These cost spoils of Conquest, which are a raid specific currency. With all that being said, I think there isn't much other information you need to succeed as a casual beginner Destiny 2 player. However, if you wish to push your Destiny gameplay to the utmost efficiency, here are some tips I have. Any item you don't pick up, excluding Glimmer, will be sent to the Postmaster. This Postmaster does have a limited inventory, however, and items will get deleted to make space for new ones. You can take out any item from your Postmaster at the Tower. The Tower is also home to the Monument of Lost Lights. As said earlier, you can purchase exotics here from previous expansions that you can't access anymore. You can also buy pre-rolled legendary weapons that have good perks. Everything costs a good amount, but some good items to grab ASAP are the Wither Horde, Izanagi's Burden, and the Always On Time Sparrow. One thing to note is that these all cost exotic ciphers. This is a rare material that can only be received either from the Season Pass or the NPC Zer. Every Friday he spawns at a random location over all of Destiny and gives you the Xenology quest, which requires you to do 21 of Destiny's base playlist activities in turn for one exotic cipher. He also sells a random exotic gun and an exotic armor piece for each character. The way armor stats work in Destiny 2 is a little confusing. A legendary armor piece can only have a max total stat count of 68. These 68 points split into two separate totals. Across mobility, resilience, and recovery, you can only have 34, alongside discipline, intellect, and strength at 34. This is why I put the Discipline Armorer mod on my Ghost. I am currently trying to get my recovery, resilience, and discipline stats very high, so I obviously pick one of those three. But if I pick recovery or resilience, it will very likely take away from the other stat in that category. Dim has a feature that automatically puts thumbs up besides guns that have a good roll. 
That means if your gun has a good combination of perks and attachments, it will show you on Dent that it's a keeper. For newer players, this is a good way of knowing what to keep and what is just trash. If you like a gun and it doesn't have a thumbs up, that's still great. Eventually, you'll get a good enough grasp of what the perks in this game do and that you can naturally could look at a gun and see its usefulness. A very important thing to remember each day on Destiny is to check the mods that Ada 1 and Banshee 44 are selling on the tower. These aren't immediately useful for new players, but future you will love you if you buy every mod that they sell, as some mods won't show back up in their store for months at a time. One especially good tip is to join the Destiny 2 LFG server. This server has an astonishingly large amount of players, and they have chats for every activity both PvE and PvP, each extremely active. If you own the Witch Queen Deluxe Edition, you can access the Crown of Sorrow War Table and Star Chart on the Hound. Each of these menus give an overview of all the guns and armor for that season. If you complete that season's content, you can earn Umbral Energy, which used alongside Umbral Engrams, can be focused into specific red borders for guns from that season, or armor pieces with guaranteed high stat totals. I heavily recommend this once you're a bit later into the season, as it's a great way to farm armor and get good craftable weapons. Alright, I think that's it. This video took a long time to make, so I'd appreciate if you would like and subscribe to help me afford making more videos like this in the future. Once again, this video is the first of many tutorials I plan on making for the channel, so stick around to see more, and perhaps even a few funny moments from my own time playing Destiny 2 and other games.